Madame, Monsieur, bonjour. Je suis très heureux de vous retrouver dans cette nouvelle émission. Euh, C'est une émission spéciale. Nous allons, nous allons euh, discuter de la relation euh, Maroc-Irlande. Émission spéciale, invité spécial également. Nous avons le plaisir aujourd'hui de recevoir euh, son excellence euh, l'ambassadeur d'Irlande au Maroc, euh, Monsieur James McEntee. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, merci d'être parmi nous et merci d'avoir répondu à notre invitation. Merci beaucoup Alice. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi de me retrouver euh, aujourd'hui euh, devant vous et pour avoir euh, l'opportunité de converser avec vous sur... Euh, euh, les relations euh, bilatérales entre nos deux pays magnifiques et de parler de, de m'adresser aux téléspectateurs euh, du dernier mot. Parfait. Euh, Monsieur l'ambassadeur, we said in the backstage that we will be free to speak both in French and English. So what, yes. that's what we will do during the show. Uh, before starting uh, the show, uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, I would like to introduce you to the Moroccan community. Uh, you were born in the county of Mayo. Uh, it's a county located in the west coast of the uh, of Ireland, in the province of uh, Kanat, right? Indeed. Uh, magnific uh, region. I, I saw some landscapes. It's a wonderful Indeed. region. And with a, a green and red flag, just like the flag of Morocco. Okay, so that's I, great. I, I feel very at home every time oh, okay, I see the, that's uh, great. the Moroccan Lovely. flag. So you, you, you had your bachelor's degree at University College in Dublin, right? Yes. At the same time, you had a, a French language diploma at the Alliance Française in Dublin, and that's why your French is perfect. <laughs> um, 11 years later, you obtained a diploma in international public administration at ENA, l'École Nationale d'Administration, uh, in Strasbourg, France. Okay. And you joined the Irish Department of Foreign Affairs in 1990. And you had a very, very uh, good diplomatic career there. Uh, you went through Paris, Brussels, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, and you end up in Morocco. In Now Rabash, only, only the great cities of the world. <laughs> oh, that's great, lovely. Uh, in Morocco in 2021. And before your arrival, uh, arrival in Morocco, you were uh, director of for Latin America and Caribbean. That's right? Correct. Did I miss something, Mr. No, Ambassador? No, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's great. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, um, the Moroccan people uh, don't know that much about Ireland. Uh, we know that it has been member of the European Union uh, um, for almost 50 years, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, that Ireland has a, a quality of life among the best in the world. Uh, its economy uh, has strongly rebounded since the Great Recession in 2008 and 11. Uh, before that, uh, it was, uh, I mean, a very successful country. I think the, it was called the Tiger of Europe, something like that, Celtic, right? Celtic, Celtic Tiger economy, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, Ireland is also a country of uh, ancient and modern music, folk music, Irish type music, dancing music, uh, is a country of U2, the Cranberries, and many yeah. uh, lovely songs. A land of uh, literature, Oscar Wilde, Samuel Beckett, and many others. Uh, nation of rugby, of course. I, 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 I'm from a generation we raised with the uh, Five Nation Tournament before it became Six Nations. Six, yeah. Uh, and also, I would say it like that, a country of high or euphoric drinks, if I may say. Oh, oh sorry? Uh, uh, euphoric drinks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, these are my words, but uh, please, Mr. Ambassador, how can you present Ireland for the American community with your words? Uh, I certainly miss a lot of things about Ireland, so how can you say about that, please? Okay, thank you uh, very much, um, Ali, for this opportunity. And, and firstly, um, I would like to say what a, a great honour and privilege it is for me to be Ireland's first resident ambassador um, to Morocco. Mm -hmm. um, the Irish government uh, took the decision to open uh, a resident embassy here in Morocco. Um, in recognition of um, the 
uh, the great potential to further develop our bilateral relationship in all areas, economically in particular because we identify um, a lot of mutual um, interest between our two, our two economies and prospects to further develop our two-way trade and to develop um, investments um, and cooperation in both directions. Um, it's also obviously an opportunity to deepen our political engagement and our engagement across all areas in uh, terms of um, academic, cultural, social exchanges and, and people to people exchanges. Um, so I'm very honoured. Um, it was a particular honour for me on the 17th of January to uh, present my uh, carte de créance um, to His Majesty. Um, as Ireland's first uh, resident ambassador um, in Morocco. Um, I have a small team where, where, where we're st still setting up the embassy, and, but we have a, a very full and a very ambitious agenda to continue to work with um, the various uh, partners um, in uh, the Moroccan uh, system. Um, I should say in this regard I'm uh, very ably um, aided by the excellent uh, Moroccan ambassador uh, to Ireland, uh, Alas Samrawi, who's doing uh, an excellent job uh, for Morocco there and we both uh, are in, uh, in close regular contact and working together to see how we can jointly support all efforts to further develop and deepen um, the relationship between our two countries um, in all areas. Um, in, uh, and, and, and one of my challenges is, as you said at the, at the beginning, that uh, people in Morocco perhaps don't know so much about, uh, about Ireland. We're a country um, on the, sometimes described as, um, you know, we're on the northwestern um, edge of Europe. We're an island, the other side of a larger island um, outside of the European uh, continent. Um, and while we're uh, you know, a relatively small island with a population of 5 million and 7 million if you include the population of the, the total island, including Northern Ireland. Um, so we've been always conscious of the need to be outward looking. We don't, like Morocco, have a large domestic market. So we've always had to um, look towards um, economic opportunities and be very open and outward looking and as a result Ireland has now one of the most open and outward looking economies in the world. As you said, kindly said in your introduction, um, we have had um, a return to strong economic growth, um, highest level in, uh, in the European Union and, uh, and we trust that that will continue. We are focusing on a lot of sectors that Morocco also focuses on um, in terms of um, the financial services sector, aerospace and automotive sectors, um, agri-tech, um, a full range of areas where life sciences, where we both have a particular interest um, and we have in Ireland a very high level of uh, foreign direct investment, um, a significant portion of that from the United States. And maybe something that isn't quite realized in Morocco is that in many cases, the, not just the European headquarters for um, uh, those companies, but very often the African headquarters for those companies mm -hmm. are also um, based in Dublin. And so many of the um, developments and projects here are run out of um, offices in, uh, in, in, in Dublin. So, excuse me, sir, uh, Ambassador, you are talking already about the, um, because that was my question, my second question, the criteria. Why did you make the choice of Morocco as the location for your embassy in this region of the world? And you are talking about that, uh, all, yeah. the, all and, these aspects. And, and one of the reasons is that uh, Morocco has been very successful in persuading us mm -hmm. of uh, how Morocco firstly in its own right um, has tremendous economic opportunities but also it has increasingly become a gateway to the African continent mm -hmm. and in the same way that we in Ireland uh, point out to people that yes our population may be small but as members of the European Union uh, people doing business with Ireland are doing business with a market of 
450 million because of um, our uh, membership and our access to the to the EU markets. Mm -hmm. So we're both conscious of that um, bridge. Uh, Morocco is a bridge to Africa. Ireland is a bridge to Europe, and the potential for our um, companies in both countries uh, working together. Um, I, I suppose, uh, in terms of the image of Ireland, um, probably the, the best known um, Irish company in Morocco is Ryanair, sure. the um, international uh, low cost airline, which has a, a strong presence here uh, with three bases operating in, uh, in 10 airports. We currently have direct flights uh, from Dublin to two cities twice a week to Marrakesh and to Agadir. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that uh, we will see further expansion of those routes and hopefully the development of, of further okay. uh, routes to Ireland. Uh, because I think we all recognise the importance of um, air connectivity to develop business and to develop tourism. Sure, I will, we will talk about that later. Okay. Um, um, Mr. Ambassador, um, you have been in Morocco since a few months. Uh, uh, eight, eight, eight months. Eight, eight months? Yes. Okay, can I have your first impressions about the, uh, the Moroccan people, the Moroccan community, the Moroccan history, tradition? Uh, what are your first impressions about uh, Morocco? Very positive, yeah. but uh, I, was, I was warned by people to expect a, a, a positive experience and, and I'm really delighted. I have found that people have been super welcoming and really keen, uh, particularly as a new ambassador, a new embassy, really keen to assist us. Um, a great interest in Ireland um, on the part of everybody who, mm -hmm. I, who I meet here. Um, I'm struck also by the tremendous variety in, uh, in Morocco as I travel to um, so far to the main cities, how different they all are from, from one another. Um, and that sort of cultural richness and, and diversity is something that is, uh, that is very impressive. Um, uh, we like to think in, in Ireland that, uh, and I think it's true, that uh, we're very similar type uh, people. Um, we're both, uh, I think, very kind of friendly and welcoming peoples. Uh, one thing I'm struck by here, which is exactly the same in Ireland, is that you walk down the street and, and strangers speak to you and address you, which, 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 which we do at home, and, 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 and that's nice. Yeah, and, that's great. Um, um, and we do like to think in Ireland that we're really the, the, the Moroccans of, uh, of Europe in terms of our, um, of our personality and our outlook. We both have very rich traditions of, uh, of, of, of history, of culture, of music. And we're, we're very conscious of the that, that many of our particularly our more traditional Irish music has its origins in, in North Africa. And... Uh, so I'm very keen to uh, work to bring to Morocco some of our musical and other cultural offerings, um, and, and, and you will see the, the similarities that are there in our, in our music and in, indeed in our dance. Okay, that's great, that's great, Mr. Ambassador. Um, my next question is about the Moroccan community living in, in Ireland. I would like you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, to give us a feedback about the the Moroccan community in, in Ireland. Is it fully integrated? Is it somehow participates into the progress and development of Ireland? What are the feedback about the, uh, the Moroccan community in Ireland? It, it is very much so. Um, it is a relatively small, but a very vibrant and active community. Um, and and uh, Ambassador Marawi plays a, plays a big part in, uh, um, in that. Um, we have many uh, Moroccans uh, doing very well in, uh, you know, sort of running restaurants, running aircraft leasing companies, working for a lot of the um, social media and other international companies that are headquartered in Ireland. Uh, also, we would have, uh, you know, a number of, of Moroccans married to, married to Irish people. So. Mm -hmm. While it's a, a small community, it's a very um, successful and a very active one. And one that I think, I think it's fair to say, I think that uh, uh, les émeraux en Irlande uh, se rendent d'accord avec moi que, que pour eux c'est vraiment un, un pays comme ici où, où l'accueil est, est, est très chaleureux. Ils se sentent chez eux. 
Et en fait, en Irlande, euh, nous, nous, nous ne parlons pas des, des immigrés, nous parlons des, des nouveaux Irlandais. Are the, the new Irish is how we like to describe. Très jolie appellation, cela dit. Yes, it, it, it's a nice. And a, a statistic that, that people find interesting is that Ireland is probably more uh, multicultural and multi-ethnic than people realize because 17% of those living in Ireland were born outside of Ireland. Okay. And it is the same figure for people born in Ireland who um, basically are living abroad. So we have 17% of the people born in Ireland are living in countries abroad and 17% of our population. Um, and, and, and an increasingly um, varied and, and diverse population. Um, you mentioned rugby earlier and Ireland is known <coughs> as a rugby playing nation. What maybe people don't realise is that the main sports in Ireland are not played anywhere else in the world apart from where you have large Irish communities in, in the United States, in Britain, in Australia, etc. And that's Gaelic football and hurling, mm -hmm. um, which are our most uh, popular sports. So we're, we're, we're quite proud, uh, like Moroccans, we're, you know, we're a proud kind of nation, we're proud of our distinctiveness. So that's one area where We are, we are quite distinct in, in, in playing national sports. Our most popular sports uh -huh. aren't played elsewhere. And even though rugby is only our fourth sport and we don't have too many people playing it, we like to think that uh, we, uh, we're very successful for a sport in which we have so few people uh, taking part. Okay, okay. Um, now, Mr. Ambassador, I would like to, uh, you to talk about the economic exchanges between our two countries at the bilateral level and multilateral yes. level with the EU. Can you tell us, I will make it very simple, what Morocco buys from Ireland and what Ireland buys uh, from Morocco in terms of goods and services? Yes, okay. Um, it, 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 the, the nature of our imports and exports can actually have, have been varying from, from year to year. Mm -hmm. um, in general, um, uh, Moroccan um, exports to Ireland have mainly been um, in the area of, uh, of chemicals, uh, phosphates, uh, fruit and vegetables, as, as, as you'd expect. Um, in our case, uh, maybe interestingly, Um, we're also exporting quite a lot of chemicals to, uh, we have a very large pharmaceutical industry in, uh, in Ireland um, and um, dairy and food products also would be a major component. I'm very pleased that our, um, while the overall level of two-way trade is, 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 is not very high, it increased between 2020 and 2021 from total two-way trade of 142 million euros in 2020 up to 247 million in 2021, Impressive. almost a doubling um, in 2021. Uh, so far we have just had figures to the end of March for this year, but we're quite confident based on the figures so far that we're going to continue to see that trajectory of growth. Obviously, As, as Ireland's ambassador here, I'm keen to see that we will continue to see that uh, growth in, um, in two-way exports. Um, as far as investments are concerned, there have been some very significant um, Irish investments um, announced in Morocco <coughs> in the last year. In the last uh, 10 days, um, the leading Uh, corrugated paper producer in Europe, which is an Irish company, Smurfit, Pap Smurfit Kappa, mm -hmm. has announced um, a, a project. Its first um, plant in Africa will be built in Rabat and will employ 300 people mm -hmm. and is uh, being built to service um, the Moroccan market, the mm -hmm. Moroccan customers. Um, Uh, that, that's a welcome announcement. And then um, in summer of 2021, there was an announcement by another uh, Irish company called Aptiv of a mega project in Ujda in the Oriental region oh, really? to create 3,500 jobs. Oh. So truly a mega project um, in the construction of, in, in the manufacture of automotive cabling, given how. Um, significant and growing the automotive um, industry is here. So the best is yet to come? 
Yes, and because we, we, we are very keen to work with the Moroccan authorities, um, the Irish state agencies, now that we have an embassy here, are, 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 are now exploring opportunities for Irish companies to be part of the supply chains to the growing automotive industry here, the growing aerospace um, industry here, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of, uh, of companies. Ireland and Morocco basically are, are agricultural um, economies, um, different sectors in, in many cases, but um, I think we have a lot um, of experience that we can share with one another. Um, we have companies, for example, that are among the world leaders in, in food ingredients and flavorings. We have companies that are among the world leaders in building equipment and machinery for the agricultural industry. Um, so many, they're, they're the examples for Ireland, there are many other examples of where Ireland and the European Union offers opportunities uh, for Moroccan companies to, to develop, and so we're keen, we, 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 we're convinced this is a win-win a, a situation, so um, we're working with our state agencies, working also with, uh, with AMD, CGUM and so mm -hmm. on, to mm -hmm. uh, also um, demonstrate the opportunities that exist in Ireland. For Mr. Ambassador, I attract you, sorry. Uh, can we imagine one day uh, une chambre de commerce et l'industrie uh, marocco irlandaise uh, Yes, we... Does it exist already, or is it something... No, we, we are working initially on having in place um, a, a Morocco-Irish business network, and, and, and you know, which, which essentially would play the, the, the same role, mm -hmm. um, and we, we think that a, a very useful role can be played uh, by such a, a network or a chamber in working alongside um, the two, uh, the two governments, the two, um, uh, you know, sets of of state promotional um, agencies. Um, mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Uh, the next question, uh, Mr. Ambassador, is about tourism. Uh, Morocco and Ireland both are known as uh, tourist countries, destinations. Um, if I ask you, Mr. Ambassador, to um, say some word about the destination Ireland for, you know, Moroccan are great traveler around centuries. Uh, we like traveling for tourism or studies. Uh, what will be your, your words to let the Moroccan community visit uh, Ireland for a long weekend, for holidays, etc.? Well, thank you for giving me that, uh, this <laughs> opportunity. And uh, as I said earlier, we do currently have direct services twice a week from both um, Agadir and Marrakesh mm -hmm. to Dublin, um, which is, uh, you know, one of the leading kind of European destinations uh, for travel. Um, one of the secrets of developing our tourism industry and one of the, 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 the main helps has been um, uh, low fares that, that allow people to, 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 to travel and to visit. Um, we have a, um, a very strong uh, tourism offering um, uh, across, across Ireland and on the island of Ireland. Um, we're probably know, best known as being a very green country mm -hmm. uh, because of all of the, the rain that, uh, that, that we receive. So a very kind of fertile and, 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 and beautiful landscape. Um, Ireland during the summer months is a very attractive location for people um, who want to escape the heat in, uh, in Morocco or in southern Europe um, to cooler. We have a, a temperate climate um, so that we don't, uh, our temperatures are, are never very cold in winter but equally not as hot in summer as they, as, as they might be here. But a very rich lot of, of sports that are of interest to, to Moroccans, um, golf, is, is, is a sport that we have, we have a lot in common and we recently had a, a visit to Ireland by the Royal Federation of Golf to explore cooperation with Golf Ireland. Uh, equestrian is another area also where, where we're very strong. Um, Ireland and Morocco are among the countries that produce the best horses in, uh, um, in the world. Um, water sports, um, uh, 
due to both of us being on the Atlantic, we have some of the best surfing uh, locations okay. um, in, 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 in the world. So, so, so very varied tourism offering. Um, and I know that our um, Tourism Ireland, our Tourism National Promotion Agency, in the same way as, as, as your wonderful O&M Day is, uh, is, 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 is working hard to, um, to inform um, uh, Moroccan uh, tourists of the, uh, the very interesting uh, things that they can do on a short or, or, or a longer visit uh, okay. to Ireland. And that will be obviously one of my priorities as ambassador to uh, publicise and demonstrate the very varied and interesting uh, tourism offering that we have in Ireland for visitors from Morocco. That's great. And uh, Mr. Ambassador, if I ask you now uh, um, your uh, advice to your compatriot in Ireland, uh, to let them visit Morocco, what would you say for your, our, our I Irish can, people to let them I, visit Morocco? I can tell you already that <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful hospitality that Irish people have been experiencing in, uh, in the two direct routes in Marrakesh and in Agadir, mm -hmm. um, and I understand very high occupancy rates on flights and, and, and a real hope that the frequency of such flights will be, uh, will be increased. Um, I mean, word of mouth has been uh, very helpful in Ireland. We have a tradition in Ireland of people coming here for decades to, we've had flights for a long time, seasonal flights mainly, now we've year-round flights to Agadir mm -hmm. as a winter sun destination. Uh, obviously there is sun year-round in, in Agadir, so, so it's important that that message is spread, that uh, it's a great destination year-round. Um, Marrakesh, particularly with our younger visitors, uh, really, really positive um, feedback, um, I mean, Marrakesh, as you know, is now recognized as one of the, the leading destinations for, um, particularly for, uh, for, for weekend visits, so it's very popular. Um, and then obviously the cities to which we don't yet have, uh, have direct flights, um, um, you know, the variety that exists in, um, in, in how different every city and every region is in, in, in Morocco is something also that uh, you know, we're keen to, um, to help inform Irish people um, about. And, uh, and I think we're, we're already seeing an increase in, uh, in tourism in, in, in both directions. And also the flights obviously also facilitate the Irish people who live here, the Moroccan people who live in Ireland in getting back home to, uh, to visit their families. Something else we have in common is that uh, uh, those strong bonds of family which are very important in Morocco as they are here. And, and you asked me earlier about my experience of Morocco and I was really struck by having uh, been here through the first Ramadan I've actually got to spend here and to witness the, not just the religious but also the cultural significance of, of, of Ramadan. Um, the honour of being invited by, by families to join them for Iftur and uh, that's something um, that uh, yeah, has, has special atmosphere. a very special, has, yeah. has, has made an impression on me. Uh, and is there any plan, Mr. Ambassador, to reinforce the air flight between um, Ireland and Morocco? I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, about a flight from Dublin to Rabat or Casablanca, for example. Is there, is there any plan for that? We, we, we would love to see that and uh, are obviously working with others to point to the, um, the advantages and the business in having a direct connection, particularly a direct connection, I think, from either Casablanca as, as the business capital or, or, or Rabat to, to Dublin uh, would be something I would love to see mm -hmm. um, in, in the future. And uh, I think it's for... Uh, important to, to, to demonstrate to the airline companies that their, their business is there, their profits to be made in operating that route and, uh, and other routes to, sure. uh, to, to elsewhere. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ambassador, next question is about education. Um, uh, Ireland has uh, very famous universities around the world. Um, are there any partnerships between the Moroccan universities and the Irish universities? in Dublin, Cork, uh, Galway, maybe other places? Yeah. Yes, uh, they're, they're currently, and, and, and mainly I have to say down to the, 
the, the, the great efforts by the, the Embassy of Morocco in, uh, in Dublin. There are currently six memoranda of understanding or, or cooperation agreements with universities um, here in Morocco, including um, both uh, Mohamed Zank University and the International University of Rabat have um, agreements with Trinity College uh, Dublin, which mm -hmm. is, is, is perhaps our, our best known university mm -hmm. and which just this week uh, the latest uh, ranking, world ranking of universities was announced and, and Trinity College is among the 100 top universities um, in the world. Um, as I say, currently six links, we are working on, on a number of others. Um, just to give you an example, I had the, the pleasure a couple of weeks ago with my colleagues from the uh, European Union um, to visit the Euromed University in Fez. In Fez yeah. I had the pleasure the previous weekend of, of spending a, a weekend in, in Fez and visiting the wonderful Medina and the oldest university in the world. Um, yeah. And now alongside that we have Euromed, which is a, a really um, a modern uh, university open as our universities are to the linkages with, um, with, with, with industry and, uh, and I'm hoping in the period ahead to continue to visit um, many more of the leading universities here and to explore the opportunities for further cooperation and for um, a partnership uh, arrangements. Um, one, one sector that is really of interest to us is there currently aren't that many uh, student exchanges or, or staff mobility exchanges. Um, I, have, I have noticed and noted in, 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 since I've come here, and it has been said to me on many occasions, the increasing interest on the part of Moroccan students, workers, universities, mm -hmm. of um, the English language, of uh, you know, visiting... Um, uh, doing studies in English, um, uh, traveling to, to learn English um, and that's one area that we as a, an English speaking country are very keen to, um, uh, to show our, our wares as we say in English and to show the opportunities that exist. Um, we are now the um, um, the main English-speaking country in the European Union, mm -hmm. and uh, so 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 that is one area um, that we're very keen to um, to work on and to respond to what we see is a is a growing interest um, and demand. Um, we uh, also um, I think we have um, a lot of courses that are of um, of interest uh, to. Um, uh, to students here who are looking at opportunities for Erasmus uh, under the Erasmus program. Um, so so, so that, that again is one area that we will be prioritizing of academic and, and mm -hmm. student exchanges in the year ahead. People say that um, one of the biggest successes of the European Union has been the Erasmus program that has allowed European students from across the European Union to visit and study in other countries. And I think that um, that uh, exchange of, of students is one area that can really help build and deepen understanding. So it is one area that we're hoping to, we will prioritize, not hoping to, we will prioritize um, in the period ahead. Yeah, sure, because the Moroccan students are, as I said, are travelers. They are travelling around the world for studies. Yes. And, and Ireland should be or could be a, yes. a, right, yes. a right destination for their studies. Indeed, indeed. I think both of our peoples have this gene in our bodies that uh, yeah. um, makes us interested in travelling and, uh, mm. and, and in living abroad. Mm. And uh, traditionally, Ireland um, had you know, uh, uh, people left Ireland in, in, in the past out of economic necessity, that's no longer the case, but that tradition of traveling and exploring still exists and still, yeah. and still continues. Yeah, sure. Um, now let's talk, Commissioner Bachelor, about culture. Um, Ireland is, uh, is a country of a great history and, and, and culture. Um, were there, since you are here in Morocco, were there any uh, cultural uh, I mean, event, uh, or are there any uh, plan for any uh, cultural event in, in the future? And my um, following question will be: uh, 
as you are expecting to uh, develop the ties between Morocco and, uh, and Ireland in, at all level, and economic level or so, do you plan to, uh, to open a, a kind of centre culturel Irlandais in Morocco? Can we imagine this one day in, in Rabat or Casablanca or elsewhere? Who, uh, who, who, who knows? I mean, I, I can certainly say that uh, the development of our and the promotion of our culture and the exposition of our culture um, is going to be a major priority. Un unfortunately, we've only been here eight months for those first few months. Obviously, the uh, public health restrictions uh, linked to the COVID pandemic has, mm, has not allowed, sure. but um, we, we can all see that... Uh, Activity in normal life is thankfully resuming, so we are working on what we think will be a, an interesting a cultural program. We already know, as you mentioned, the um, interest that there is in, uh, in Irish music and um, in Irish dance. I mean, I think one of the, the biggest calling cards for Ireland is this river dance and similar shows uh, that have become a, a, global, uh, a global phenomenon. Um, uh, it wasn't possible to do so this year, but next year we hope that uh, uh, we can promote St. Patrick's Day, our national holiday, the 17th of March, which has increasingly become a global celebration mm -hmm. uh, throughout the world, that uh, we can promote it more in, uh, in Morocco. Um, we have a number of other celebrations that um, uh, Halloween, for example, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of October, is a, a tradition and a celebration that was brought to um, the United States by Irish immigrants. So it's a, 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 an, an Irish kind of pagan festival. Mm -hmm. So, and I was struck by how, mainly through, through international schools, how Halloween is, is celebrated here. Mm -hmm. um, we have other um, events in our calendar, um, including Bloomsday coming up uh, next week, which, um, uh, marks and, and celebrates that uh, wonderful novel, uh, Bloomsday, written by one of our greatest writers, uh, James Joyce, um, and uh, a celebration of the role of Irish women on, on St. Bridget's Day, the, the patroness of Ireland. So uh, we are hoping that we will kind of mark these main kind of dates and events and celebrations in the Irish calendar and, 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 and bring the opportunity for audiences here, and by here I don't just mean in Rabat and Casablanca, yeah. but across Morocco, um, to see um, some of the best examples of Irish music and dance. And I'm also very interested in this theme of, of fusion sure. and how um, we can see the um, bringing together musicians and artists from uh, from both countries. They come already to the uh, Festival of Fez, yes. which is taking place these days. Indeed. I, I saw an Irish uh, band. Yeah. It was really interesting to see Indeed. them and, and it, was, yeah. it was really lovely, yeah. it was fantastic. But no, we, we, we look forward and, and also, I mean, uh, we're finding, you know, Ireland and Morocco and others are finding that, um, you know, cultural diplomacy is a very useful tool of wider kind of economic and, sure. and, and political diplomacy. So as, as we say in English, uh, watch this space. Monsieur uh, l'ambassadeur, je vais poser cette question en français. Uh, il y a uh, une certaine similarité entre nous, vous l'avez dit tout à l'heure, uh, le sentiment très très fort d'appartenance the uh, uh, feeling of belonging. L'appartenance à une grande nation. Et je pense que nous le partageons aussi bien le peuple marocain que le peuple irlandais. Euh, les Irlandais, euh, là où ils sont, euh, première génération, deuxième, énième génération, okay. ils sont fiers. Et ils viennent... Il euh, y a des attaches incroyables avec euh, l'Irlande. Comment vous expliquez ça, monsieur l'ambassadeur non, tout à fait. J'ai déjà fait la, la même remarque comme les, les Irlandais, les Marocains qui habitent à l'étranger euh, sont très fiers euh, de, leur, euh, de leur souche, euh, de leur nation. Et euh, nous avons tous les deux les populations, vous parlez ici des, des MRE, des, des Marocains résidents à l'étranger. 
Euh, nous avons, ça fait, ça fait des années que nous avons travaillé plus étroitement avec nos communautés à, à l'étranger, à travers surtout les ambassades où on a les populations les, les plus importantes. On dit par exemple qu'aux États-Unis, il y a plus de 40 millions d'Américains de souches irlandaises. Président Joe Biden. Et exactement. Un rendez-vous visite à, tout, 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 au village de ses ancêtres. Tout à fait. Et ouais. plusieurs, euh, de, plus, bah, beaucoup de ses prédécesseurs aussi avec ouais, ouais. Euh, ouais. des souches euh, irlandaises. Et, euh, et pour nous, c'est il y a une priorité tout d'abord de de veiller à, à, à aider les, les, les Irlandais à l'étranger en cas de difficultés, mais aussi à leur donner une opportunité de contribuer au, au développement du pays, d'écouter leur avis, leur point de vue. Et on a beaucoup d'Irlandais dans les positions d'influence dans les sociétés étrangères, comme c'est le cas pour euh, les Marocains, euh, dans les mêmes positions ailleurs. Et, et je pense qu'en fait, il y a un... Euh, je propose d'avoir un, un partage d'expérience euh, avec euh, euh, le système marocain sur comment euh, nous donnant la priorité à notre engagement avec ce que nous appelons le diaspora irlandais. Nous sommes 7 millions sur l'île d'Irlande, mais on dit qu'il y a 75 millions d'Irlandais dans le monde. Et très souvent, on dit que euh, entre les pays les, les mieux connectés avec leur diaspora, avec leur euh, population étrangère, sont les Irlandais, les Marocains, les Israéliens et, et autres. Et je pense que ça, c'est vraiment un sujet pour euh, un partage, pour comparer euh, nos expériences. Et car il y a une volonté de la part des Irlandais à l'étranger, comme c'est exactement le cas pour les Marocains à l'étranger, qui sont tellement fiers de leur souche, de voir comment il pourrait contribuer au, au développement du pays. Et euh, nous croyons, et, et vous croyez ici, que c'est très important de répondre à, à, à cette euh, volonté et pour donner les opportunités de, de contribuer. Euh, même si un Irlandais habite à l'étranger, si un Marocain habite à l'étranger, il ou elle reste marocain, marocaine, fidèle. Et fidèle. Fidélité. Exactement. Fidélité spirituelle, il y a une fidélité oui. culturelle. Il y a... oui. Tout à fait. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, on, on arrive au terme de cet échange fort agréable et il est de coutume de laisser le dernier mot, d'où l'émission, de laisser le dernier mot à l'invité. Quel sera le vôtre, monsieur l'ambassadeur Merci beaucoup, euh, Ali, et merci encore pour euh, m'avoir donné l'occasion de, de parler à vous, à vos téléspectateurs. Et bon, je pense que je vais continuer en, en français avec euh, mon dernier mot, si, si vous me permettez. J'espère, quand je serai de retour sur la plateforme, de, de dire quelques mots en Darige et, et même en, en Amazir, car je trouve que la, la diversité linguistique est, est très, euh, très importante. Et, pour moi, euh, en fait, euh, mon dernier mot, en fait, c'est que pour vous dire que ici, ce ne sera pas mon dernier mot, car euh, on a prochainement, nous allons fêter les 50 ans de relations diplomatiques entre l'Irlande et le Maroc, en fait en 2000, euh, 2024. Et déjà, nous avons les plans pour marquer euh, comment les relations bilatérales euh, ont développé, euh, comment nous sommes vraiment les les pays amis avec beaucoup, beaucoup d'opportunités pour mieux développer euh, nos relations. Euh, ça fait aussi cette année 30 ans qu'il y a une ambassade résidente du Maroc à Dublin. Et heureusement et finalement, je suis ici avec euh, mon équipe 
avec une ambassade euh, résidente euh, pour euh, tout faire pour, avec les partenaires euh, marocains qui sont aussi euh, euh, très, euh, qui partagent notre enthousiasme pour euh, mieux développer euh, les relations euh, dans tous les domaines dans nos deux pays. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur l'ambassadeur, merci d'avoir répondu à notre invitation et, et merci pour le temps que vous avez bien voulu nous consacrer. Euh, je vous souhaite grand succès à votre mission au Maroc pour renforcer les liens entre euh, nos deux pays. Et euh, je vous dis euh, à très bientôt. Euh, et vous me permettez une dernière chose, euh, excusez le, la prononciation. Guru Mahagut. Est-ce que c'est bien ça Excellent. Est-ce et... que c'est bien prononcé <rire> Merci beaucoup. Oui, c'est parfait juste pour expliquer aux, oui. aux téléspectateurs que l'Irlande est officiellement un pays euh, bilingue. Notre langue traditionnelle, c'est la langue irlandaise, qui est entre les, les langues les plus anciennes euh, le gaélique, du monde. Je me semble le, le, le gaélique, exactement. Et, et, et Ali vient de me saluer, Gorham <rire> qui est merci dans voilà. la langue irlandaise. Et euh, et qui veut dire, monsieur l'ambassadeur, que juste pour euh, vous remercier de nouveau pour euh, m'avoir donné l'occasion de venir euh, vous parler euh, aujourd'hui et, euh, et à très bientôt. Tout le plaisir était pour nous. Madame, Monsieur, merci d'avoir été avec nous et je vous dis à très bientôt pour une nouvelle émission. Au revoir. Mmh.